Welcome to In an Instant. My name is Ben, and today we're going to go big or go home. Well, we're, not, we're actually not going to go home because we're already going big here, shooting 20 by 24 here at Wyckoff Windows, a new studio in Bushwick, New York, by the lovely people who brought you Brooklyn Film Camera and other ventures. Uh, today we're shooting as large a format as we possibly could, 20 by 24 on this incredible camera built by the fine genius Ethan Moses of Camera Dactyl. And I'm not going to hold us up any longer because we have some great friends and family and some amazing guests that are coming into this episode. So let's just fire off. kind of photography that would become part of the human being. Press a button and have the picture. Three, two, one. Okay, so we are here at Wyckoff Windows shooting what is essentially the final frontier of formats for me, 20 by 24. And this is a really incredible opportunity, an incredibly historical moment that Ethan Moses has brought us from Camera Dactyl, building this camera, coming up with this process paired with it, and I couldn't be more thrilled to be here. 20 by 24 has history with the Polaroid Corporation, who in the 70s developed their 20 by 24 camera, which had sort of mixed uses. For one, they let artists come in and use the cameras which were producing incredible true-to-life prints and some very historical images were captured on it. A lot of celebrities were captured on it, politicians, just generally important people. And the other use for that camera was to duplicate reality, essentially, because it was capturing such true-to-life images, it was used to duplicate paintings, it was used to capture sculptures, and basically replicate reality in the most realistic way possible. Uh, they also created a 40 by 80 camera for the same purpose. So fast forward to 2021, the 20 by 24 camera is really on its last legs in terms of chemistry because the Polaroid company is no longer making it. So we're getting this incredible opportunity uh, to sort of revitalize it a little bit and bring it back into a semi-instant process, which we'll explain in a second. Um, and uh, I'm just, I'm just shaking, shaking in my boots right now, getting the opportunity to do this. And with these lovely people, you can't beat it. So let's get into it. All right, so we are here with Picture Man Bob, one of the goats. Uh, that means greatest of all time for people who are new to internet.com. Uh, Bob is gonna get the first portrait of this first session, which is very exciting. Um, Bob has a creative idea in mind, and I'm very excited to explore it. We're gonna explore every bit of you, Bob. Are you ready for this? Ooh, explore it. I'm we, ready. Yeah. I'm ready. You're hype? Hype meter. Oh, the hype meter's just like booming right now. Bursting. Bursting right now. <laughs> What's the largest portrait you've ever had taken of you? Oh man, probably just a four by five. So. Okay, so we're about to go, what, five times that? We're, we're doubling it, Woo! doubling it. We're, we're going crazy. Sheesh! All right, you ready, Bob? Three, two, one. Whoa. <laughs> oh my God, dude. Bobby. Bobby. Oh. Bobby, boy. <laughs> Bobby boy. So they say you never forget your first 20 by 24. I was the first. You're the first. We, we were sort of around for some others, but you're the first, like, you know. I gotta dude. hug it out, man. Bro. Okay, this is um, what we like to call in the industry a dump truck camera. Um, it has an absolute wagon. It is enormous. Uh, Ethan created this camera from scratch. Tell me a little bit about that. So first, about 25 years ago, I started growing the trees and mining aluminum. Uh, no, it's, um, it's a laser cut camera. It's got a bunch of 3D printed parts. It's got a bunch of uh, 3D printer hardware. Uh, it's based on you know some traditional 8x10 designs, but it's just real big. It is real big, um, and the size of the camera introduces a few challenges. Um, the holder is one aspect, but also framing and focusing a shot of this size uh, becomes quite a challenge. And when you think of like a 35 millimeter negative, this like tiny little thing, if you've ever had trouble getting something like that in focus, this is this much bigger than that. And uh, it introduces all the challenges of large format and the joys of large format, but with like a spritz more of difficulty, especially for our model over here. So here we have Sonny with his uh, his big old, another dump truck piece of pizza. This thing is, uh, we got sort of a pizza camera 
combination going on here in terms of size. So Sonny, once you get this pizza up into the air, right. you essentially have to stand perfectly still yes. for two minutes-ish because there's a lot of components going on with the, with the camera setup. Right. Um, and you're ready to just freeze with that pizza? Yeah, so I'm mean, gonna have to make sure that the pizza doesn't dip down and do some motion blur, you know, it just gotta- Yeah, be, yeah, 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 exactly. Be crisp. Yes. yes. And uh, the crazy thing about the lens here, for the moment of the capture, is that there's no shutter on this lens uh, in particular. So when we take this picture, instead of, you know, cocking a shutter, hitting a shutter button, we actually remove the lens cap fire the strobe, and then place the cap back on. And because of the limited light that's entering the camera when the cap is off, it literally doesn't see anything except the moment the strobe goes off. So it's a really interesting process. Uh, the subject still needs to stand like a statue, but uh, yeah, it's all about the strobes. This is, this is for the strobe bros, using a camera like this. So Ethan, in terms of like, f-stops, light loss, what's happening with the bellows? Like, how did you even meet her for this initially? Um, you know, one could meet her, but I also kind of <laughs> treat it like baking. I, you know, rip one out in the morning. You gotta see rip one where, out in the morning. See where we're at and uh, go from there, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I always expect the first one to be not very good, but it tells me where the chemistry's at uh, and where the color's at. Uh, but my f-stop is f-blue tape for the portrait setup, and then this one is uh, like I think Ben side light. Yeah, we, these are our custom settings. So if you want to shoot a banger like Ben, you gotta <laughs> you gotta set your f-stop to Ben side light. There's nothing quite like the frigging ground glass on a 20 by 24 camera. It just makes you want to die in here. It makes you want to pass away in here. I just want to live my last moments in here. The reason that we hold these filters in front of the lens is because we have more of a tungsten balance on the paper that we're using, uh, and this scientific blend of filters sort of negates that. So we hold it in front of the lens right before we press that shutter. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. Oh my god, dude. Nice. Wow. That is insane. Looks like an 80s like pizza commercial. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, Pizza Hut. <laughs> the first day utilizing the camera, we had a series of absolute kings and queens come into the studio for their portraits, and it was pretty bang bang. Moving the camera is so challenging that we essentially stuck to our overall frame and exposure, which over both days we did have to wrestle with as we dialed back the strobes, which were giving us some hot spots, absolute heaters. But latitude is so narrow with this process that we really didn't want to dip into underexposure. So much light is lost through the huge bellows of the camera that it requires constant experimentation every time you adjust, but it's always worth it when it dials in just right. When Ethan first called me and told me he had built this camera and that I'd have the opportunity to shoot it, my first question was how close can we get? His first question was, can you bring the spacesuits? But we'll get to that later. Oh uh, yeah, so this, gonna, this doesn't fit. <laughs> <laughs> this doesn't fit your head either, huh? <laughs> I find the biggest drama of this enormous format comes when you see a perspective unlike anything you can achieve on another camera. A larger than one-to-one -one portrayal of a head is just... Well, calling it big for business is like a dull scissor. It ain't cutting it. All right. <laughs> see you guys. Hang on. All right, don't move. And depth of field is so razor thin at this field of view that nailing focus is crazy tough without the sorts of braces that were used for folks in the early days of photography to stay statuesque. Even so, our best swing at it rocked me onto my buns. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, oh my god! Wow. Damn, Dude. this is what we like to call in our industry a spicy meatball. <laughs> oh! Oh! That's a big old little old head. Wow! <laughs> wow! Wow, man! Oh my gosh! Unbelievable! You're getting the raw emotions here on this show, and, and there's there's these moments in photography in general that just like take your breath away. This is absolutely one of those moments. First time I saw a four x five. First time I saw an eight x ten, and this like these are now like in the family together of incredibly hype moments. Thank God we were recording it. Oh my God. 
bad. Ooh, wow. <laughs> oh. Wow. Oh, I think that is. Yeah, that eye looks sharp to me. Sharp enough. Oh, sharp enough. Sharp enough. Sharp enough. Sharp enough. You got it. Oh, my God. Wow. Oh, no. Wow. wow. That is too much, man. Okay, so now it's finally time to develop a sheet. I'm here with Ethan, who's come up with this incredible holder. Uh, but before we get to that, this is something called the RA4 process, correct? It's a RA4 reversal print. RA4 reversal print. And to my understanding, this is essentially this holder. Inside this dark room holder, we're going to be developing this as a black and white sheet and then revealing it to light then putting color developer on it and seeing it sort of come to life. Is that, that, that's sort of my dummy's way of explaining it. Is that somewhat accurate? Yeah. yeah Your approval true. means the world to me and that is, is going on. This guy's literally a genius. Um, and as a result, he's gonna walk me through this because you know I don't wanna screw up the developer times or anything like that. So tell me what's the first thing I gotta do. All right, so we shot a picture in camera directly on a RA4 piece of paper as your standard darkroom print. For those of us older than 25 years old, remember like CVS, uh, photo paper, it's that paper. Um, so uh, we're gonna pour in some Dectol in that jug. And then as we say in the industry, agitation, correct? Yes. Agitation. This is where we shake it, we move it, we tilt it, give it one of these. We wanna cover this entire piece of paper with this chemistry, otherwise there will be some whoopsies. Um, so uh, the, the real innovation here, is it is it the holder, essentially? Yeah, I think so. I mean, this process has been done for ever, right. um, but rarely this big. You know, instead of pouring chemistry in and out of a tank like this, you would use a continuous processor where the paper goes through different baths, where you would do it in trays and, and move the paper instead of move the chemistry. Right. And this sort of simulates a little bit of like the instant film. Like we're almost calling this instant film because of the way we can develop this right on the spot and you can watch it come to life. Um, but yeah, I'd say this is sort of the fun feature of this. I just thought if you poured the chemistry for a single sheet of paper into the back, you know, you, you could make it a whole lot smaller. Right. Um, it's maybe slower than like blacking out the whole room and having bath to bath to bath, but that would be huge and nobody could watch. It exactly. This, this has an experiential element to it, it which does. is why it was so fun doing this for an entire day, having a rotating gag of photographers and enthusiasts alike coming in here to enjoy the 20 by 24 process with Ethan, Ethan Moses and his magnificent Camera Dactyl 20 by 24 camera. You're watching it an instant live. I'm here mid agitation in Bushwick, New York. Proximity to the L train is an, an, an incredible here. Access to local businesses, natural light. How does that? It's pretty cool. It's it's so fascinating. Yeah. It's so cool. Yeah. It's such a such an experience. Yeah. You've gotten into large format in your own photography a little bit, right? I mean, I've only like tried it yeah. here and there. I haven't really done anything. Um, of this scale? No. It's like jumping up into like a media. It's the fix. It is. And the only way to solve it the is. fix is getting. 4x5 or 8x10. You gotta keep going big. And then at one point you just go by 20x20. 20 20 yeah. And you move to the Netherlands. Yeah, you go to 20x24, <laughs> you shoot at the six cameras in the world. We may have to acquire one. Yeah. yeah. Reasonable amount of negative space on this one. Now, I think I heard him say negative space. There's nothing negative about space, I tell you that. I tell you that much. I, I do, I tell you that well, much. I mean, and the food's not so The good. food is awful. It's not, it's not mom's cooking, I'll tell you that. Gravity, uh, not as cool as everyone says it is. Not like, the best. Kind of hurts, but... Missed. And, like, there's no real trees or anything on the moon. True. That, you know what? Space kind of sucks. No, uh, space? You're not wrong about that. Three, two... <clears throat> I think we did it, boys. Oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> Yep, yeah, that's what it's all about. Yeah, that's what it's all about. <laughs> that's right. absolutely what it's all about. <laughs> and, well, like a chicken Caesar, that's a wrap. <laughs> <laughs>
Well, I'm sitting here in Wyckoff windows just reeling because those couple days of shooting with that 20 by 24 camera were an absolute game changer. Uh, I'm very thankful to all the friends and family that came in to have their portraits taken. Uh, Ethan Moses for making this possible. Kyle Depew, the folks at Brooklyn Film Camera, the crew of Wyckoff's Windows uh, for, for staging this incredible moment in photographic history. And to be even a small part of it was magnifique and massive for business. And thank you for watching in an instant. Go ahead and uh, absolutely drop your dump truck ass on that subscribe button. Stay tuned for more shoots, reviews, breakdowns, and all things in. <laughs> and all things instant. Bye. Man, Neil Jr., it is good to be back. It is great to be back. Now, maybe we didn't get them Hasselblads and maybe we're on death's door right now, but we are taking a large ass portrait. Oh, I'm sorry, I just cussed. Yeah, I want cool. Well, are you not gonna tell them that we found this on the moon? Yeah, we found this, this is we found this goddamn camera on the moon. We found this obscure man living on the moon named Ethan. Man, he's like a freaking Martian or something. I don't even know what his thing is. He can't talk English, but he does speak cameras. <laughs> there he is. Hard to argue with that. <laughs>